Hi guys, I'm Amy and on this channel we talk about creativity. Today I'm going to share with you some things to think about if you're going to be setting up a booth somewhere and selling your creative products to the public, either at an art show, art fair, holiday, market, craft show, anything like that. So stay tuned. I was recently at the Chi Omega Christmas Market in Dallas. It's one of the biggest holiday shows that we have here every year, and I love to go to it. Last year, I sold my things as a vendor, but this year, I had a lot going on and was super busy, but I still managed to go out there one evening to check it out and see what everybody was doing. And while I was walking around, I kept noticing things that I thought vendors were doing well or booths that looked great. And so I just whipped out my phone and got a few seconds of video at a lot of different places and made some notes on my phone of things that I thought were being done really well. So this is kind of the do's and maybe a few don'ts of setting up a booth to sell your wares. The first note I made and the first tip I have is to add additional lights to your booth, especially if you're setting up in some kind of a large cavernous space like this hall where they have the Chi Omega show. It's great to have an indoor show, especially in the winter and at holiday time. You don't have to worry about weather. But the lights can be so far away in one of these big, huge halls that it really helps if you have lights down on your products at the top of your booth. Another thing that really helps a lot is if you can find a way to extend something up above the top height of your booth, that really will draw the eye to your space and differentiate you from some of the other booths. So having lights and having anything up a little higher will help bring customers' eyes to your booth and help them see what you've got. The next tip I have that this booth was doing right is to position customers so that when they're checking out and buying things at your cash register or whatever setup you have, it will not clog up your booth and make it impossible for other people to come in and shop. The space you want to use for customers to be standing around in when you're checking them out is the, the space of the aisle. That That's not what you're paying for and your customers should be able to come in and shop while you're checking out somebody else. Have them stand in the aisle and have your customers still be able to come and look around at other things while you're doing that. Otherwise, people are waiting around trying to get in while you're trying to take someone's money and they may just stop waiting and go ahead and leave. Another thing that's really helpful if your booth is big enough is to create a separate entry and exit pathway so that customers can flow in and out of your booth and see your things. If there's one way in and one way out, People will get stuck and clogged up and it'll create a log jam and sometimes fewer people will come into your booth. And the more narrow that space is, if you only have one space, the worse that problem is going to be. So if you can set it up where you have sort of a center island and a place for people to come in and a place for people to naturally go out, it will help with your traffic flow. This is a little hard to do when you have a single booth, but it is possible. And so one of my other notes uh, of somebody I looked at was, I saw somebody who had just a single booth, a 10 by 10 spot, and there was a column kind of in the middle of the front, which normally I would say avoid at all costs. There are architectural things you need to check the floor plan and try to make sure you're not getting a booth that has some kind of weird architectural thing in there that's gonna mess up your setup for your shelves or whatever you normally use, because that can really, really mess up your plans when you're trying to set up something and then there's this big column or wall or something there that you weren't planning on. So make sure that, you're, that you know exactly what your booth is gonna look like. But in this case, it was a small booth. They had, they had merchandise that was narrow and fit closely to the walls, so their merchandise didn't stick out real far and take up a lot of space. And so people were able to come in from one side of the column and come back out from the other side and it actually kind of helped create flow. This only works if you're if your items that you're selling are pretty close to wall, maybe all up against the wall, like ceramic plates or something like that, or something small, if they stick out very far from the walls, then, then that will take up quite a bit of the room inside your booth and this, this setup may not work. The next tip is to build a magical place or a theme, something lovely for people to enter and almost feel like they're experiencing you know just a new reality or another world it's really great especially at holiday type markets if you can create this feeling that they're entering a magical space when they come into your booth some booths do this really well and it's a lot of fun for customers and it really draws them in this next tip is a don't i tried to really stick with positive things i was seeing instead of showing things that don't work well but i have to say do not build a cage or a trap where there's one way in and then people are really blocked into your booth. People do not like to make a commitment to your booth until they've already kind of seen what you have and have some idea that it's something they're interested in because, you know, the vendor's gonna be sitting there, it's a person, and they don't wanna be rude and like come in and then go, oh, I don't like this and walk right out again. They, they wanna 
have an idea of what they're getting into before they commit enough to actually step into your booth. So if it's more open and more inviting and a little easier for them to actually see what's inside and get in and out, they'll be more likely to step across that threshold. The next tip is if your product needs explaining and that people can't just get the gist of what it is in just a few seconds by taking a look at it, consider getting a carnival barker. I say this because a lot of us artists and creative type people are more introverted and it's not that easy necessarily for us to kind of flag somebody down and talk about ourselves and tell them how great our art is or our product. But if you have something that, that people can really appreciate once they step up and see it and understand how it works, then it really helps to have somebody who is willing to explain it. So what I'm saying for Carnival Barker is also known as an extroverted, enthusiastic friend you have who really thinks your stuff is great and is maybe a little a little better at just talking to people they don't know than you are. It, it's really helpful to have a friend like that there. And also other people can brag about your work easier than you can. So consider finding that special person to kind of help make sure that people understand what you have and what you do. The next tip is to make a strong style statement with your booth, with everything in it and the decorations of your booth and the way you present yourself. Especially if you have a mix of products as opposed to just one type of product like all Christmas ornaments or all picture frames or all tea towels or all socks, something like that. If you have a mixture of things, jewelry, clothing, handmade, refurbished pieces, decor items, make sure that that everything speaks to the same style, the same design vibe, because what you want is for a customer to walk by and say, oh, this is me, this style is me. And then that way they recognize that everything in here is possibly something they'll be interested in buying because they've decided that you get their personal style and that you have created a booth with an assortment of products that will all appeal to them. So it's important to mention this, don't try to be all things to all people, especially at a show like this, Speak strongly about what it is you do and what you create and you know maybe there's a few things you need to leave at home because they're they just are kind of random and don't really go with the vibe that you're setting up for all the rest of your booth. It's really better to have consistency in what you're showing and what type of thing you're showing so that people can categorize it and make sense out of it quickly. They're going to be walking by your booth quickly and they just need to get kind of a quick visual assessment that you are their type of style or not their type of style. And so you want the things in your booth to all kind of speak the same language and back that up. This is a little more of a technical note, but if you are doing a double booth space, that's like say a 10 by 20 typically, consider doing a pass through booth like this one here that sells boots as opposed to a side by side booth. We don't always think about that when we're looking at the floor plan and picking out where we want to locate ourselves. But if you do booths that are back to back, you will open up onto two different aisles and also because you have a pass-through, it's a place that people can cut through to get to another aisle if they want to. That may seem a little rude or it may, it may not happen very often, but it does mean you'll kind of get more traffic flowing through your booth and traffic is usually a good thing. Now here are just some pictures of a booth that I think kind of does everything right, a lot of the different stuff we're talking about. And it is the other side of that booth that I was showing when I said create a magical space for people to enter. So all the things they're doing. They're showing a consistent type of design style that somebody says, oh, that's my style. I would like that jewelry. I would like those clothes. And they also have created this magical entryway on the other side. They've also got a good flow for uh, traffic patterns for people so the booth doesn't get too crowded even though it's a popular booth. A final tip I wanna say that I just thought of over and over again while I was there looking around at people is, when you're setting up your booth, take a step back, go across the aisle and look at what you have and how you've displayed it. And even think about this when you're designing it. Ask yourself if, if a drunk, distracted person could, within the first you know five seconds of walking past your booth 10 feet away, could they figure out what it is you're doing, what you're selling, what you have to offer and why they should be interested in it because at these holiday shows especially, people are having fun, they're with their friends, they're having a couple of drinks, and they're talking and they're distracted, and so you need to make sure that it's not confusing. Make your message loud and clear so that you can get through to people who are distracted and doing other things, having a good time. They're there to shop, but they're also there to have fun with their friends. So, so 
take a step back and really try to evaluate your booth and see if you're sending a message that almost anybody can figure out without, without you having to hit them over the head with it. Okay, those are the pointers I came up with when I was at Kai Omega. It was a beautiful show this year, and I'd love to hear in the comments what shows you do or, or wanting to do. I also would love to invite you to join our Creativity Reboot Challenge. It's a free five-day challenge that's just gonna help you get your creativity back in the forefront. If you dream of doing art shows or selling your art, but you never seem to have quite enough time for it or you're afraid to take that leap, I wanna encourage you to join our group because we are putting our creativity back in the forefront and making a commitment to acknowledge its importance in our lives. I'd love for you to join us. Thanks a lot.